Three, two, one, go. So in board game terms, the game of life is sort of rough. Um, it's got this terrible runaway leader problem. It's more or less a random series of events that are strung along with the barest pretense of a theme. And <laughs> yeah, it's not very good. Wait, no, sorry, not, not the game of life, actual life. If actual life was a board game, it would probably get pretty bad reviews nowadays. It's pretty poorly balanced. It has this pesky player elimination issue. And as far as we can tell, you can't even play it more than once. <laughs> so this is part of why board games are such a great form of escape and entertainment, because they're just generally better than life. The very best <laughs> board games may look daunting or maybe have these terribly thick rules, but they can actually lead to some of the most fun and social times you can have friends, with friends and family. So I'm suggesting that board games should be your next hobby, because they're very exciting, they have much better rules in actual life, and they've never been more accessible. So board games have been around for thousands of years, but we're actually just now in the golden age of board gaming, uh, since about the last 20 years. Uh, the first board games were invented more or less just after the first rainy days and bored children, uh, but the ancient Romans and Greeks were known for enjoying a good strategy game or two. Uh, around the 1960s, board games were more or less divided into two categories. On the one hand, we had Euro-style games. These games tended to avoid direct player confrontation and elimination, and also relied a little bit less on luck and chance, but as a result, they were sometimes a little dry, not terribly thematic, um, and weren't really telling very good stories. Like most things that are far too clever and generally humorless, they usually came from Germany. <laughs> on the other hand, we have the game types that are affectionately known as Ameritrash, affectionately. Uh, these games focus more on player interaction and telling really, really good stories, but as a result, they sometimes had fiddly rules and relied on way too many dice rolling and card drawing. So all that changed in 1995 with the publication of Settlers of Catan, which was the first Euro-style game to really break out in the USA. Um, it has since gone on to sell 22 million copies and has opened up the board game borders between Euro-style games and Ameritrash. <laughs> so in the last 20 years, we've seen just this huge growth in creativity and a huge explosion in the variety of board games that are offered. Uh, a lot of the games nowadays more or less mix and pick and choose from the best elements of both Euro-style and Ameritrash, and are really developing these very cool, very novel board games. So, for instance, games are very immersive nowadays. Uh, the Game of Thrones board game, for instance, can actually turn you into a manipulative bastard. <laughs> and other board games can make you feel like an egotistical presidential candidate. <laughs> um, a lot of the very modern board games can cater to any play style or any needs or wants of the players. They come in all shapes and colors. Uh, board games are an exceptionally good activity for sort of the one to eight player range. Um, but very good games exist up to 10 players, 30 players, and beyond. Uh, modern board games nowadays have wonderful artwork. They can have compelling stories. They can have as much chance as you want or don't want. Beautiful components. Those are sheeple. <laughs> uh, the very best board games, as ranked by BoardGameGeek.com, uh, include heavily asymmetrical two-player Star Wars reenactments, they include cooperative games uh, where you work together to cure the world's deadliest diseases. Um, they can simulate the very, very real panic of trying to survive a zombie apocalypse um, or escaping a cursed temple. Uh, <clears throat> I'm too fast. Oh, yeah. Uh, so where old board games were often very ruthless and very cutthroat, um, a lot of the modern games, even though they can be war-style games, are actually very friendly to new players. Uh, by avoiding player elimination a lot of the time, you don't have to sit around bored waiting for your friends to finish up if you get knocked out just because you don't really know the game terribly well. Also, if you happen to be losing, a lot of games have very good catch-up mechanisms where uh, just because you're losing, you can actually get brought back up into the fray. Um, you don't have to suffer from not knowing the rules privilege. So, assuming that I've sold you on board games, uh, how can you get involved? What can you do? How do you find the coolest board games for you to enjoy? Fortunately, Edmonton has a relatively thriving board game scene. Um, there are 
about a half dozen dedicated, friendly local game stores with happy staff that are willing to show you the ropes, teach you new tricks, uh, offer you games that you might look to enjoy based on how long you want to play a game or what sort of game you're looking to get into. Uh, a lot of these board game stores also have rooms at the back set up with tables where they'll host tournaments or playthroughs for anyone who's interested. Uh, similar to that, Edmonton also now has four dedicated board game cafes where you can go in, you can buy a drink, you can uh, pay a nominal fee, and then you can play any of the vast libraries of board games. Uh, for the more serious gamers out there, Edmonton also regularly hosts uh, meetups or community centers will have large tournaments. There are also dedicated conventions throughout the city uh, at various times. Uh, the very best of board games that you're looking at playing can take anywhere from six hours with your nine closest friends or 20 minutes in a quick break. Uh, so board gaming is obviously a very fun, diverse hobby. <sighs> That one was my favorite. So, <laughs> board games really come along in the last 20 years, and it's a lot better nowadays than sort of the trivial pursuit, Candyland, Snakes and Ladders that you might have been used to from your childhood. Um, and it's actually really exciting to see where it's gonna be going. You don't just have to take my word for that, though. There are whole YouTube channels that are dedicated to celebrities playing board games with each other that are actually a lot of fun. I know for me personally, board gaming is one of my go-to social activities to catch up with friends and family. Uh, and it's often good for sort of practicing new skills. So in case you weren't already a board game geek, I highly suggest you get on board. <laughs> Go check out a friendly local game store. Check out a cafe. Enjoy them. <laughs>